Bonjour. Take a seat, please. Tout le monde prend place. Nous allons commencer. So we'll begin. Honorable ministre. Honorable ministers, excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The fourth plenary session of the fourth United Nations Environment Assembly is now open. The order of the session is set by the speaker list. If you need to consult this list, please come to see our conference officer who can help you with this. Before inviting our first speaker onto the stage, I would like to remind our delegates <coughs> that during Tuesday's plenary session, it was decided that a timer would be placed to the left of each speaker. This is to allow them to monitor the time allotted to them, which is three minutes while they're speaking. The microphone will automatically turn off after their allotted time plus a short grace period. I would ask all delegates to make their speech within the allotted time. The video and text of these statements will be published on the UNEA website. I would also like to remind delegations who have not yet sent the written form of their statement to the Secretariat to do that as soon as possible. I now have the great honour of inviting the Minister for Water and the Environment for Yemen, Mr. Azi Hibat Allah Ali Shuraim. Excellence, vous avez la parole. You have the floor. السيد رئيس جمعية الأمم المتحدة السيد رئيس سيم فال كيسلر President of the Assembly uh, Acting Executive Director of UNEP Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen Good afternoon Allow me, first of all, to express my deep appreciation to the uh, Republic of Kenya for their warm hospitality and generosity since we arrived to this country. We would like to congratulate Ms. Anger Anderson on her appointment as the Executive Director of UNEP, and we wish her full success in her new mission. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to stand before this fourth session of UNEA, which is of great importance to us, even more important so to the future generations. We assure them that we will rise to their expectations. I would like, at the very outset, to assure you that we support the themes of this assembly for this year pertaining to innovative solutions to the challenges of resource sustainability. We echo the positions of the group of Arab states on the ministerial declarations, and we thank the countries which voiced their support for Arab draft resolutions. Ladies and gentlemen, my country is continuously battling disasters. Both both natural and man-made. 
With regard to natural uh, res uh, disasters, they are the result of climate change. It is the reality of our daily life. For instance, the number of tornadoes in uh, Yemen have increased in the past few years. Between 2015 and 2018, our country was hit by five tornadoes, which devastated a number of coastal cities, including Socatra, Al Mohra, and Shuba. This led to the loss of life, destruction of homes, properties, and the infrastructure. It threatened, they threatened the livelihoods of already impoverished communities, and uh, although they uh, depend completely on agricultural uh, activities. In addition, we have noticed a change in uh, the rainfall patterns, thus leading to land degradation, soil erosion, and depletion of natural resources. Dust waves have led to health problems, which have increased the burden of our citizens. With regard to man-made disasters, they are represented by the uh, activities of Iran-backed subversive uh, militias. They destroyed our infrastructure and the environment on land and sea. Whereas we work towards cooperating in order to achieve lasting peace and contribute to issues of importance for our future generations, there are militias in Yemen which, who are planting thousands of mines uh, and that threaten the future of our generations. Ladies and gentlemen, in spite of our dire circumstances and enormous challenges, we have harnessed all our capabilities in order to take part in the international community's efforts to conserve the environment. We have worked with environment organizations in the past year. Merci, Monsieur le... Thank you very much, Minister. J'ai maintenant l'honneur. I now have the honor of inviting the Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development of Colombia, Mr. Ricardo Lozano. Thank you very much, President, distinguished heads of state and government, ministers, ambassadors, heads of delegation, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to join my colleagues in expressing solidarity and condolences for the accident for the victims of the accidents um, on Ethiopian Airlines, and I'd like to thank Kenya for its hospitality, as well as Minister Sim Kiesler for his hard work and his leadership and dedication, as well as the whole Secretariat of UNEA. For Colombia, it is essential that the discussions in these multilateral um, environments work based on science, as well as traditional knowledge of our communities, which allow us to deal with global challenges with holistic solutions in order to achieve the goals of uh, sustainable development and responsible production. We have started out on a path in Colombia for harmonious uh, coexistence using natural capital producing while conserving and preserving while producing. And so in President, we have looked for interactions between the public and private sector, as well as civil society, in order to adopt uh, environmentally sustainable practices, which are low in carbon and disaster resilient. We all work within a modern uh, institutional framework as well as a citizen culture that promotes biodiversity as strategic assets of our nation. 
in order to meet with the goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Our country was a pioneer in our region in terms of implementing a national strategy for a circular economy, which tries to harmonise consumption and sustainable development through reducing the intensity, intensive nature with which we use our natural resources and to um, set up recycling and reuse. We have sectorial and intersectorial agreements and we try to look at products' whole life, styles, life cycles and how we can repair, reuse, remanufacture, uh, recycle and then recover um, the products used by industries. In the energy sector, for example, we have um, a new system for um, introducing solar and wind energy We've also created a national ministry for plastics to reduce the production and use of plastics, especially single-use plastics. We are still undergoing green negotiations in various regions uh, with the aim of generating products and innovative solutions for sustainable use and to protect biodiversity. Colombia believes it is a priority to be even more ambitious and to move forward when it comes to the um, global framework for biodiversity after 2020. We would like to invite all other member states to participate actively in this process. We are deeply sorry that in this global assembly, the UNEA, we have not managed to adopt a resolution that fights against, for, against our biggest problem, which is deforestation, which destroys more than 220,000 hectares per year in our country, in particular um, areas such as natural parks in the Pacific region of Colombia. Given this uh, picture, we are undertaking local intervention programs and economic programs along with Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, Germany and the UK. To wrap up, I would like to invite all member states to commit to immediately implementing the solutions, the innovative solutions that we have agreed to during this crucial assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that speech, Ricardo Lozano. J'invite à présent. I would now like to invite Mr. Minister Jose Herrera, Minister for the Environment, Sustainable Development and Climate Change of Malta. Mr. President, Ministers, Ambassadors, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, it is my pleasure and honor to be able to address at this important occasion of our global environmental gathering. I would like to start by expressing Malta solidarity with the families and friends of the victims of the Ethiopian Airlines plane crash. Now back to the, to the subject. We now all fully recognize that economic growth cannot be sustainable if it is achieved at the expense of social progress and environmental protection. We need to ensure that government's policies, strategies and initiatives are guided by the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Establishing an ambitious and long-term sustainability policy is key for progress. And this is what the Maltese government is doing through the development of a new sustainable development strategy with a horizon up to 2050. Sustainable production and consumption are a prerequisite for a sustainable and prosperous future for all the world's people. Despite its evident limitation in relation to size and topography, Malta can't continually seek to translate towards a more circular economy to develop sustainability. Cognizant of the efforts required, the Maltese government is currently finalizing legal provisions to institutionalize the notion of circular economy in our country. The provisions will emphasize government's duty to foster the transition towards and the subsequent growth and development of circular economy. It also enshrines a duty of the citizens to, as much as possible, ensure that in all activities partaking, efforts are made to minimize waste generation and that any waste produced does not harm the environment. Other initiatives 
that are in the pipeline include a strategy on single-use plastics. The strategy will aim at promoting better sustainable consumption patterns. These will be complemented by various other sectorial policy frameworks, such as the regulation of commercial waste and the separate collection of pharmaceutical waste. And this after introducing compulsory separation of household organic waste last year. This time, for taking, it is time for taking concrete action. The longer we wait, the more expensive it will be for our country to readjust. Small economies have limited economies of scale, and this results in limited investments by private firms in R&D. The Maltese government is addressing this through various initiatives for the promotion and expansion of industry and the development of innovative enterprises. Being the largest consumer, government plays a key role in the market. Hence, the Maltese government launched the second green public procurement action plan. This confirms the government's intention to lead by example. In doing so, it is hoped that the private sector will follow suit and shift its procurement towards greener practices. The financial sector has a key role to play in this much-needed transition. Indeed, Malta has undertaken a study to assess those green financial instruments that are best suited to incentivize more take-up of greener and more sustainable production and consumption patterns. Thank you. Je remercie son Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you very much for that statement. Honourable Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, due to unforeseen circumstances, Minister Cami Robinson Regis from Trinidad and Tobago has asked to make her statement slightly later, and as long as there are no major objections to that, I would now like to invite Minister Marcelo Mata from Ecuador to make his declaration, his statement. You have the floor. Senor President, on behalf of the Ecuadorian government and in my capacity as an environmental authority, it's a real honor to participate in the fourth United Nations Environment Assembly. And with the warm welcome that the government of Kenya has shown to us here, we would like to thank them for their generous hospitality. Firstly, allow me to give you a brief introduction to Ecuador, which is one of the 17 most biodiverse countries in the world, boasting two thirds of the planet's biodiversity and the greatest biodiversity per, per square kilometer. Like the vast majority of developing countries, our natural wealth has been affected due to pressure generated through various production and market mechanisms, as well as high levels of poverty. These are circumstances that we have to bear and for which we still require international support in terms of funding, technology transfer, and capacity building. Ecuador has a constitution that guarantees the right of nature. It is the first to do so in the world. It has mechanisms that include, among its goals, adopting processes, technologies, and other instruments that allow the state to establish sustainable development and work in harmony between humans and nature. And so I would like to introduce our flagship program, which is called Make Ecuador Green Again, which is focused on preserving our biodiversity and exploiting this as an intangible asset, um, using alternatives for sustainable development and new models of production that are friendlier to the planet. Last year, we uh, submitted our voluntary national review to the President Lenin Moreno, and our President Lenin Moreno 
declared that it would be a national government public policy through an executive decree to adopt the Agenda 2030 for sustainable development along with its 17 goals. In my country, clean production and responsible consumption was something that was created 10 years ago with the support of the United Nations Environment Programme, promoting the implementation of this process through environmental incentives under the title Green Point, which has allowed us to optimise natural resources, uh, try to avoid plastics getting into our rivers and our sea. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Excellency, for that statement. I would now like to invite Minister Carol Dieschborg of Luxembourg, the Minister of the Environment, Climate and Sustainable Development. You have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Chers collègues. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, first of all, I should like to extend my sincere condolences to the families of the victims of the terrible plane accident. I should also like to thank all those who prepared this fourth uh, UNEA, as well as uh, the Kenyan government for its hospitality. My statement is aligned with that of my Romanian colleague on behalf of the European Union. Global pressure on natural resources is leading to an enormous degradation of ecosystems, biodiversity, and climate, affecting not only the most vulnerable but the entire um, global community. I therefore warmly endorse the topic chosen by UNIA 4, which recalls our duty to change our modes of consumption and production in order to protect the environment and health of our citizens to allow sustainable development, guaranteeing security and peace on a global level. We all are under the obligation to move towards an innovative, circular, and low-carbon economy to protect our environment, our ecosystems, biodiversity, atmosphere, soil, waterways, and ocean from pollution. Accelerating our transition to a resilient society and economy not, is not limited to technological innovation, but also involves moving towards a model of recycling and sharing. We need new partnerships between, with the scientific world on the basis of reliable environmental data accompanied by solid, robust indicators. I should like to inform you of some of Luxembourg's experience in implementing UNIA 4 and agenda, uh, the, the Paris Agreements and Agenda 23rd. 2030, our Sustainable Development Plan, which is an instrument guaranteeing consistency of policies drawn up in close conjunction with civil society and public and private partners. Each new uh, uh, regulation needs to be assessed in terms of sustainability, and this is true for new businesses. The circular economy is a tremendous opportunity to protect the environment and consumers if accompanied by sustainable management of chemical products. A zero waste policy will be drawn up uh, along with the um, outlawing of single-use plastic. The government of Luxembourg has committed itself very firmly to uh, sustainable financing and to maintain these. The sustainable Luxembourg Sustainable Finance Roadmap has been drawn up in partnership with financing from UNEP the financial sector and NGOs. Dear colleagues, it is our duty to protect human rights defenders and environmental activists. I agree with NGOs on this. And finally, I should like to stress the importance for society as a whole of gender equality and of women, because without women, without everyone, no real ecological solidarity transition is possible. In conclusion, I will listen to all the voices of civil society, NGOs, indigenous peoples, and in particular of young people who force us to act. Therefore, please do realize that Luxembourg will continue to be among the ambitious countries. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, Ambassador Dishbu. Once again, because of unforeseen circumstances, the Minister of Guatemala, Alfonso Rafael Alonso Vargas, has asked to make his statement slightly later.
unless there are major objections, I will so decide. Minister Ricardo de Aquino Sales, Minister of Environment of Brazil, has the floor. You have the floor, Mr. Minister. You have the floor, Mr. Minister. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the Brazilian delegation presents its solidarity to the United Nations organizations and member states official victims of the terrible plane crash which left us shocked and deeply sad. We have only one earth where 7.7 .7 billion depend on its resources. Using these resources sustainably is not an option, it's mandatory. The world needs solutions that simultaneously allow for economic and protect environment for the current and future generations. Today, 55% of the world population live in urban areas. Tackling the environmental impacts of urban living requires efforts in a multitude of areas. Air and water pollution, water scarcity, sanitation, sustainable transportation, energy, waste disposal, recycling, sustainable production and consumption, decreasing food waste and increasing green areas. This is my ministry first priority, along with the oceans as the new frontier for the environmental protection and conservation. For, for this purpose, on March 22nd, we will launch the national plan to combat marine litter as part of the first national agenda for urban environmental quality. Aiming at improving the life quality in cities, this plan has the personal support and engagement of our president, Mr. Jair Bolsonaro. Brazil is implementing a national policy for solid waste management since 2010, which is now a priority matter along with the sanitation. The Brazilian government is particularly honored to receive the GCF, the amount of $96 million, for a successful reducing greenhouse gas emissions from deforestation, which dropped from the 72% for the last 15 years. It's our firm belief that promoting sustainable agriculture is an effective mean of presenting illegal deforestation while alleviating poverty and achieving general prosperity. Our enemy matrix is renewable and 33% of biomass has agriculture origin. With only 30% of its territory used for agriculture production, Brazil is the second largest agriculture exporters and feeds around 20% of the world population. Brazil has 64% of its territory protected by law. This makes Brazil the country with the largest protected area in the world. Sustainable tourism must also be expanded through concessions to private companies for public use and national parks. The Brazilian agriculture has shown that it's possible to achieve productiveness, gains in full compliance with sustainable development commitments. Brazil does not agree, however, with the alarming tone sometimes used to criticize developing countries' agriculture output. Meeting the requirements for a dignified uh, livelihood for current and future generations, it's not easy task. Sustainable development requires a delicate balance between environmental, social, economic dimensions. Much still needs to be done, and we all need to rise up to this challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Mr. Ricardo de Aquino Sales, and let me now call on the distinguished Minister Camille Robinson Regis from Trinidad and Tobago to make his statement. You have the floor, Madam, Madam Minister. Thank you very kindly, Mr. President. Mr. President, Excellencies, the government and people of the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago join with our counterparts in expressing our deepest condolences on the loss of lives that have occurred. Mr. President, 
Coming from the other side of the world, where the threats of rising sea levels, hurricanes and tropical storms, and the warming of the oceans are real and present dangers, our presence in this meeting is undergirded by the Ubuntu, Ubuntu philosophy that says, I am because we are. Colleagues, small island developing states such as Trinidad and Tobago are confronted with inherent challenges. And as one of the most industrialized countries in the Caribbean region, Trinidad and Tobago has developed a lifestyle that is heavily interwoven in our oil and gas economy. And although we are slowly transitioning to renewables, a mindset change is an imperative for innovation, not only in the fulfillment of our global obligations, but indeed for our very sustenance. We acknowledge that in order to surmount these systemic and historical challenges, there is need for a paradigm shift. And the components of this, this shift are contained in our national development strategy 2016 to 2030. In furtherance of the objective of this strategy to focus on the preservation and conservation of our environment, we have taken the policy decision to ban the importation of finished expanded polystyrene products for the food and beverage sector and to remove all duties related to the import of environmentally sensitive and environmentally friendly alternative products. To further incentivize this shift, we have also approved a beverage containers deposit refund policy, which aims to establish an efficient and effective recovery system for recyclables. We contend that this thrust will contribute significantly towards encouraging lifestyle th change, promoting alternatives, integrating the informal sector. And to this end, we are working closely with the private sector, NGOs, CBOs, and all citizens towards achieving our goals. Mr. President, this is not all. Tobago boasts the oldest protected forest in the Western Hemisphere, being a protected area since 1776. And in order to ensure that we continue with our reforestation program, we have made it our goal to replant one million trees over the next three years. There is no ex better expression of the results of Trinidad and Tobago's ingenuity and propensity for innovation, and may I add our propensity for creative reuse or recycling than our steel ban, which is the only musical instrument invented in the 20th century from discarded oil drums. Mr. President, it is clear that Trinidad and Tobago is Je remercie Madame le Ministre Camille Régis. Thank you, Minister Camille Régis. And I should now like to call on Minister Kolio Obiko from Kenya. You have the floor, Mr. Minister. Uh, Excellencies, distinguished uh, delegates, let me join um, my president in once again uh, extending our uh, warm welcome to, to all of you, to Kenya and to this beautiful city of Nairobi. Mr. President, according to the IPCC uh, special report on 1.5, warming up to 1.5 is likely to be reached over the next two or three decades if the world continues with a business as usual approach to uh, greenhouse uh, gases emission. Further, the 2019 Global Chemical Outlook Report, which has been launched here, 
reports that hazardous chemicals and other pollutants continue to be released in large quantities with accumulation in the environment. In the environment. Also, the GEO6, the African edition, reveals that climate change continues to have serious implications on the availability of Africa's available land, arable land, and fresh water. Biodiversity loss also poses a major threat to Africa's ecosystems. The members of UNEA, one in 2014, made critical decisions on how the world can resolve environmental challenges. By the conclusion of this session, member states will have made the additional key decisions and adopted various resolutions for implementation. The complete or substantial implementation of the Assembly's resolution, however, remains a challenge that we need to respond to and provide solutions. Otherwise, the economic practice causing global environment challenges will remain intact. In, in, in Kenya therefore proposes that during this session uh, that we should consider uh, uh, coming up with a mechanism for stock taking and also most importantly for a mechanism for tracking and monitoring the implementation of our resolution. To enhance the level of implementation of the Assembly's resolution, it is important to also concretize fairness and equity uh, for or be between different states. This includes systems to mobilize adequate financial resources, technology transfer, and capacity building that can support countries that require such support. In order to entrench democracy and human rights, there is need for members to apply public participation in implementation of the Assembly's resolution. The role of civil society, private sector, citizen in, and citizen in engaging with government is also important. In conclusion, Kenya, in conclusion, Kenya looks forward to collaborating with like-minded partners in working towards the diligent and timeless implementation of the Assembly decision towards innovation and sustainable production and consumption. I thank you all and uh, shukran sana. Je remercie son I thank His Excellency Mr. Tobiko for his statement. I should now like to call on Mr. Ola Elvestuen, Minister for the Environment and Climate of Norway. You have the floor, sir. President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First, Mr. President, my deepest condolences to the Kenyan people, the UN, UN environment, and all who suffered loss last weekend. It is a terrible tragedy. Many of those on the flight were committed to building a better world. Let us honor them by our actions here at UNEA. Despite that, it is a it is good for me to be here in Nairobi, Kenya, the African seat of the United Nations. Environmental problems do not respect borders. UN environment has been the midwife for so much international cooperation and many multilateral agreements. Together, we have addressed problems like the ozone hole and dangerous chemical substances. We have developed frameworks to manage biodiversity and climate change. These are threats to our to all and particularly the poorest among us. While there are many knowledge gaps, we know enough to act. Just yesterday, the GEO6 report was launched and the message is crystal clear. We cannot afford to sit still. So let's make the decision to take action. And as a cons consistent partner to the UN, Norway knows that real impact only comes with taking action together. But how can we make the sum of our actions greater than the parts? At UNIA 3, we adopted the Zero Vision, a goal to, to close the tap of marine litter flowing into our oceans. Waste on land is a huge global issue, but once waste is in the oceans, it is beyond our reach. It does not go away. It is a threat and it will continue to build up. We cannot be naive about what it, it will take to really halt halt the flow of plastics into the oceans and seas. There are immediate actions we can take. 
but I am convinced we need to be prepared for a long-term solution. So I am here to invite you to a Norwegian dugnad, or as they say in English, many hands make lighter work. Creating an international framework to address marine litter will enable us to achieve more. Together, we took responsibility in Katowice to take our commitments to the Paris Agreement seriously. We adopted the Paris rulebook. Let us now partner so that we in China in 2020 agree on an ambitious global framework for biodiversity. It is time to really join forces and tip the scales in favor of our own future. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Distinguished Minister. For your statement, and I now call on Minister Kimo Kilikainen of Finland, Minister of Environment, Energy and Housing, to make a statement. You have the floor. Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, first, on behalf of Finnish government, I would like to extend my deepest condolences to all of you who lost someone close to your heart in Sunday's plane accident. Thoughts of all UNEA4 participants are with you. Mr. President, the linear economic model has come to its end. In order to steer our societies to a sustainable path, we need to take giant leaps towards a circular economy. At the same time, we must reduce material consumption and switch from product-based to service-based business models. This is the message from the scientific community. And this is the path member states should walk because we will not meet the goals of the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development without circular economy. Halting the loss of biodiversity is essential for sustainable development. Unfortunately, we often underestimate the importance of biodiversity, ecosystem services and nature-based solutions to our well-being, health and very basic needs such as food and clean water. Circular economy can be part of the solution and it will help us curb the demand for virgin raw materials and relieve the pressure on natural resources. We need to turn the page and step up our efforts to protect the only planet we have. For Finland, circular economy is a key element in our transition to a carbon neutral and resource wise society. One important tool in our national transformation has been the Circular Economy Roadmap. It includes more than 60 concrete projects and administrative measures that support circular economy. We have been testing new solutions, particularly for sustainable food systems, timber construction, recycling of municipal waste and rehabilitation of contaminated land. We also provide incentives for sustainable and innovative public procurement, new product and service innovations, and circular economy investments. Finland is happy to note that circular economy has gained increased attraction in UNEA outcome documents. It has been recognized as an important pathway to more sustainable consumption and production. This is a very important message to many countries around the world that are implementing circular economy policies. To summarize, I believe that we need a revolution in the way we think about the economy. The change in our mindset, together with bold policy measures and innovative businesses, can foster the transition from a fossil pipeline economy to a bio-based circular economy. This transition is something we must and we can do and we must do that together. Thank you for your attention. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Mr. Minister Kivitanen, for your statement. And I should now like to call on Ma Madame uh, Yasmin Fouad, Minister for Environmental Affairs of Egypt, to make her statement. Madam Minister. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you. As Sayyid al-Rais, as Sayyid al-Wazara, and as Sayyid al-Wafud, 
Sayyidat. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I should like to start by extending my sincere condolences to the representatives of United Nations agencies and the member states for the victims of the flight which uh, crashed. Egypt lost six victims. I should also like to congratulate the president of this present session for his able leadership of the work of this meeting. I should also like to address my thanks and extend my admiration to the government of the Ke Republic of Kenya for the warm welcome it has given us, as well as for the excellent organization of this present session. Ladies and gentlemen, our meeting today is happening at a time of great importance in terms of multipartite environmental challenges, in particular in light of the major challenges we need to meet in order to have sustainable development. I am confident that the discussions and deliberations here will and, and the decisions that will flow from our meeting will strengthen our efforts in meeting these challenges and support the role taken on by UNEP, given that this is the main body dealing with the environment in the United Nations system. And we should find innovative and sustainable solutions to environmental problems. Our meeting has come after many other meetings and environmental gatherings, starting with the 24th co -op, COP of UNEP, which led to an ambitious plan to apply or implement the Paris Agreement. Egypt was honored to preside over G77, uh, along with China at this event, and we spared no effort to ensure the success of this conference, given our conviction that it is necessary to reach an agreement allowing us to implement the Paris Declaration. We also, re our position remains unchanged as to developing countries. We have managed to reach consensus, and we were also honored to be able to discharge these responsibilities and the presidency of the African group during negotiations at this session. I was personally most honored to have been mandated during the Katowice meeting to work closely with the German minister, Johann Fassbach, to work on one of the most important issues, financing to reach just financing that would meet, satisfy all partners. We worked to find solutions to other problems as well during these negotiations. For all of these reasons, we in Egypt are proud of our contribution to the success of the Katowice meeting because this was a conference that goes beyond uh, simple agreements to implement the Paris Agreement. This is multi-partite action which uh, has been severely criticized at present. Ladies and gentlemen, Egypt's efforts in 2018 were not limited to climate change issues. Egypt hosted the fourth conference on biodiversity, which led to 73 decisions, and we also launched an initiative to ensure complementarity between the real agreements by diversity and combating desertification, we will be continue working on this. Thank you, Minister Yasmin Fouad, for her for your statement. I should now like to call on Minister, the Italian Minister Sergio Costa to make his statement. You have the floor, Mr. Minister. Mr. President, honorable ministers, distinguished participants, first of all, I would like to express my sincere condolences to the victims who passed away on Sunday, out of which there were Italians. And I would first of all would like to say that Italy is aligned to the European Union and its member states. The Italian government 
is working tirelessly for the affirmation of a new paradigm where the industrial productive sector shifts from a linear economy to that of a circular economy and the reuse recycling and the reuse of secondary and primary materials are the rallying cry in which land and sea are free of single-use plastics. We wish to promote a new and strongly innovative uh, vision for environmental protection and become the bearers and promoters not only at national level but also at world level through concrete actions. And it is for this reason that we have strongly wished with enthusiasm, passion and readiness to open in Rome in partnership with FAO and UNDP the Africa Center for the climate change which is being which is taking place on the African continent. We want to change the way in we do cooperation on climate change and sustainability by listening to the needs of the beneficiary countries, discussing together with them the potential developments and providing them the necessary tools with which to achieve their set objectives. At the same time, Italy believes strongly in the Mediterranean system and its protection and environment, and it is with pleasure and satisfaction that Italy will host in the city of Naples from the 2nd to the 5th of December 2019 the next conference of the parties, COMP21, of the Barcelona Conference for the Protection of the Marine Environment. And it is precisely because of this that Italy believes in international efforts and we wish to tackle risk-related climate change and offer our leadership in order that we can all together rise to this challenge in unison. Therefore, Italy has submitted its candidacy officially to host uh, COP26 uh, and acknowledging and embracing the cry of alarm of the youth of Friday for Future, we appreciate the mediation work that is being implemented to include the circular element as an essential element of an environmental strategy by decoupling economic needs from environmental degradation. With this in mind, however, we find it difficult to accept the weak ministerial declaration, especially regarding single-use plastics, for which a deadline and a set binding uh, obligations and to put a stop to it has not yet been implemented. Uh, we would have wished to have exchanged environmental in information in advance so as to work together on environmental resilience and not intervene when the event is over. We do not favorably consider deleting any whatsoever reference to deforestation, an issue which for us is essential to protect ourselves from climate change and also to protect hydrological protection. I ask on behalf of Italy that UNEA 2019 be ambitious and not a lost opportunity which we may later regret when the planet will feel that we have let it down. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Sergio Costa. I should now like to call on Arlette Sudan Ono, the Minister of Tourism and the Environment of the Congo, to make her statement. You have the floor, Madam Minister. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I should like, first of all, to address my most uh, sincere condolences to the family of the United Nations and to the families of the victims of the crash of the Ethiopian plane last Sunday. As we've seen throughout our meet session, their absence is something that uh, affects us deeply. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, here I should like, on behalf of His Excellency Denis Sassou Nguesu, President of the Republic of Congo, and head of state, I should like to pay a particular tribute to President Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya and to his government, as well as Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations, for all the energy and effectiveness with which they prepared and organized this very important meeting. Having done this, I would like us to welcome the message that I'm going to be sharing with you on behalf of his Excellency Denis Sassoon Gesu. Ladies and gentlemen, I should like to take an opportunity of this 
opportunity here. I'd like to take this opportunity of this meeting here in Nairobi, this capital of the great sister nation of Kenya, to talk about my country, the Republic of Congo. I am talking about a country in the heart of the basin, the Congo Basin, second carbon reservoir and second uh, lungs of the planet after um, the Amazon. 65% of its surface is 23 uh, hectares of forests and the deforestation level is 0.05%, one of the lowest in the world. I am talking about a country where recently a real ecological treasure was found, a vast peat field on both sides of our frontier, together with the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, a major Congo, a uh, major uh, carbon reservoir, the equivalent of 20 years of emissions of the United States and three years for the planet. I am talking about a country where 17 areas have treasures of biodiversity through 13 percent of our territorial uh, surface and where we are renewing our forest resources. And finally, a country whose contribution to overall glo global warming is uh, tiny, but which nonetheless fully uh, uh, is fully affected by erosion, uh, it floods and uh, hurricanes and tornadoes resulting from global warming. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, fully aware of the responsibilities incumbent upon us, my government and I myself have never denied this for over 30 years and at all international tribunals. The Republic of the Congo has been warning about the urgency of climate change. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, if we wish to prevent a world where only the rich and powerful make use of resources with uh, injustice throughout the world, the hour of uh, the time has come to act. It's not just a question of Africa and, and Congo in particular, but it's a question of solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Minister. Arlet Sudan Ono for your statement. As sh I should now like to call on Madam Priska Furina of Zimbabwe to make her statement. Madam Minister, you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the government and people of Zimbabwe, I wish to extend my sincere congratulations to the President of UNIA for Mr. Slim V. Kisla for a successful assembly. My delegation congratulates Ms. Inga Anderson on a well-deserved appointment as the new the Executive Director of UNEP. We assure you our full support during a term of office. Let me join on behalf of Zimbabwe others in extending our deepest condolences to the uni, UN families, other families, relatives, friends, for those that perished in the Ethiopian airline plane crash of last Sunday morning. Mr. President, there is no doubt that our world is facing a wide range of environmental challenges since the turn of the century. As Zimbabwe, we recognize that these challenges require a paradigm shift in the way we do business. As we may be all aware, the world's poor depend on natural resources for their livelihoods, leading to over-exploitation and hence unsustainable utilization of the same. In order to lessen over-exploitation, it is imperative to intensify agricultural productivity through use of improved and appropriate technologies at every stage of the agricultural value chain. I therefore call upon development partners and other relevant stakeholders to partner Zimbabwe in enhancing sustainable agricultural productivity. In order to embrace life cycle approaches 
and address one of our key environmental cha challenges, that is unsustainable solid waste management. The Zimbabwe government declared a one-day per month cleanup program to encourage all citizens to practice sustainable waste management and create a clean, safe, and healthy environment as espoused in our constitution, section 73. Ladies and gentlemen, wildlife and forest conservation and protection are also a priority for the government of Zimbabwe. We believe the sustainable management of these inseparable cultural resources must benefit and improve livelihoods of local communities. In this regard, Zimbabwe has recently reviewed its national forest policy and the world-renowned communal areas management program for indigenous resources with the triple objectives of increasing community participation, conservation of these resources, and ultimately enhancing benefits that accrue to communities. As a result of sound wildlife and forest management practices, Zimbabwe has enhanced its tourism attractiveness, leading to significant growth in tourist arrivals in the country and being selected as the best sustainable tourism destination this year. Mr. President, as I conclude, let me reiterate Zimbabwe's support for the generation and upscaling of innovative solutions to environmental changes. However, for us to create the future we want without leaving others behind, there must be a balance between innovative solutions to environmental challenges and sustainable consumption and production as captured in the main theme of UNIA 4 and resolutions thereof. I thank you. Merci, Madame la Ministre. Thank you very much, Madame Minister, for your statement. I would now like to invite Professor Fekadu Beyene Aleka, Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, to make his statement. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Ministers, Head of Delegation, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me first on behalf of the government of Ethiopia to express my deepest condolences to the families, friends, and the colleagues of the victims of the accident on the Ethiopian airline that claimed the lives of our loved ones on March 10, 2019, while they were en route from Addis Ababa to Nairobi. My prayers are with all families of the victims, member states, and international organizations that have lost their colleagues in this tragic accident. I wish quick recovery for all families and friends of victims and eternal peace for the deceased. Allow me also to express my sincere gratitude to people and the government of the Republic of Kenya for the warm welcome accorded to me and my delegation since, my, since our arrival in the evergreen beauty city of Nairobi. I would like also to extend my sincere appreciations to, to His Excellency, Mr. Sam Val Marquesil, Minister of Environment of Estonia, and the current President of the United Nations Environment Assembly for his, for his wonderful leadership. Mr. President, like many other countries in the world, Ethiopia is currently facing pressing environmental challenges related to environmental change, climate change, food security, land degradation, deforestation, biodiversity loss, and the pollution, among others. Ethiopia has put in, in place numerous policies and strategies that are geared towards addressing environmental challenges in the country. Mr. President, Ethiopia is also doing its level best to ensure the conservation of biodiversity and the whole ecosystem. As part of this effort, we have endorsed a new and innovative strategy on payment for ecosystem services to address environmental challenges related to biodiversity loss and ecosystem degradation. Now the process of promulgation of a legal framework for the strategy is being finalized. Furthermore, we are working hard to ensure sound management of waste and chemicals in the country. After the third United Nations Environmental Assembly, Ethiopia has passed a regulation entitled Electrical and Electronic Waste Management and Disposal Regulation, which aims at addressing pollution from electrical and electronic waste. Additionally, the government of Ethiopia passed a reg regulation to limit the total concentration of lead in panties or any other product is to 90 parts per million. The adoption of this proclamation by the parliament clearly shows the commitment of Ethiopia to address pollution challenges and implementation of 
the unitary resolution and declarations. These achievements demonstrate the effective and exemplary collaboration between the government, development partners, and the civic society. Mr. President, I firmly believe that innovative solutions as defined as business as unusual approaches are the viable and presumably the only way to address daunting environmental challenges. Thus, in turn, necessitates collective actions at national, regional, and international levels, as well as effective means of implementation if addressing, in addressing our environmental challenges via innovative solutions is sought. Hence, Ethiopia calls for international cooperation and assistance to address environmental challenges in innovation and sustainable way. In conclusion, Ethiopia wishes to reiterate it is an unwavering commitment to work with all concerned actors to address our planet's environmental challenges as well as to achieve sustainable development. I thank you, Mr. President. Asante Sana. Merci, Professor. Thank you very much, Professor Fekadu, for your statement. I will now invite Minister Takulina Finikaso, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Trade and Tourism, Environment and Labour from Tuvalu. Minister, you have the floor. Mr. President, Excellencies and colleagues, please allow me to convey the government and the people of Tuvalu's most heartfelt and deepest sympathies to our UN family, especially to those countries and families who have lost their loved ones in the recent tragedy. Mr. President, Tuvalu expresses appreciation for the invitation to engage in meaningful dialogue for the sustainable management of our environment and natural resources with a very challenging theme. Like many of us from the Pacific Ocean and coastal state, the sea is the basis of our livelihood. Our economic development, culture, traditions, and spiritual values are intrinsically attached to the ocean and the effective management of our marine resources. Marine debris, especially plastics and many others, are decimating reefs and marine life. These environmental hazards are increasing the vulnerability of coastal and small island developing states. Mr. President, we gather here to call for the prevention and reduction of human-induced marine pollution and the establishment of a coordinated global governance mechanism to address the negative impacts of marine litter, including plastic litter and microplastic. We call for ongoing commitments under UNCLOS and SDG 14 and agency in actions to address this issue with a concrete solution. The threat from climate change is real. Addressing the impacts of climate change is a top priority for Tuvalu's national strategy for development, sustainable development. We are committed to achieving 100% renewable energy of power generation by 2025, and we have achieved 35% reduction through solar energy. This is our NDC under the Paris Agreement. We have ratified the Kingali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol to phase down the use of HFCs to keep average global temperature well below the 1.5 degrees Celsius. We are committed to establishing 10% of our EEZ as marine protected areas. We are currently conserving 18% 8 of our terrestrial area, which passes the IT biodiversity target. We are committed to the protection of biodiversity and additional knowledge. This was strengthened through our accession to the Nagoya Protocol in 2018. We have established our integrated waste policy and action plan which supports the objectives of the ATCs and Cleaner Pacific 2025, a regional strategy to address the management of waste pollution. The government is developing new legislation to ban plastics in Tuvalu, starting by hosting a plastic-free 2019 Pacific Island Leaders Forum. Tuvalu is establishing a Pacific Islands Climate Change Insurance Facility with technical support from the UN nation. This initiative is to help Pacific Island countries rebuild during and after the impact of climate in change induced disaster. Tuvalu is also sponsor sponsoring a draft UNGA resolution in the upcoming meeting in September. We aim to protect the rights of people displaced by climate change. I seek the support of the UN environment and members of this two initiative. Last but not the least, I wish to convey our sincere gratitude to the government and people of Kenya for the hospitality and for hosting such an important conference. I also wish to recognize UNEF for its expertise and efficient arrangements for the Assembly. I thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Minister, for your statement. I would now like to invite Minister Socrates Vamelos, 
uh, Minister of Environment and Energy from Greece to make the statement. You have the floor, Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, UNEA4 offers us an excellent opportunity to discuss the exchange's practical approaches and innovative solutions on how to address unsustainable patterns, production and consumption patterns, which is one of the most cross-sectoral challenges we have to face. Economic growth should not be considered as an enemy of ecology and environment. There are ways to achieve prosperity in a sustainable manner. The connection of employment and economy with environment and ecology is the only way for our future. Environmental degradation and the sustainable research management is not politically neutral. It has a strong political aspect since natural resources that belong to everybody are exploited at the expense of society. It is connected with the lack of social justice and the redistribution of wealth at the expense of the poorer citizens. In Greece, as it refers to the ecological footprint, we exceed the sustainability limit, the current capacity, less than the other development countries. But there is a long way ahead of us to reach sustainability limits. We need to shift towards a low-carbon circular economy model with more integrated life cycle approaches that help create new business through service provision for repairing products, remove barriers from the use of secondary raw materials, as well as support the integration of recycled materials, promoting resource efficiency with less chemicals inputs, less and cleaner energy, and less waste, waste outputs. But most of all, we need political decision at the highest level. We need a universal alliance. For Greece, this is the part of our growth strategy. We have developed an Energy Climate National Plan for 2030, as well as a national strategy on circular economy, where there is a detailed action plan with short term and medium term actions that include, among others, increased recycling through ambitious targets and the improvement of the operational rules for extended producer responsibility schemes to fully internalize the waste management cost of certain products, application of the payers you throw principle for municipalities, the circular economy tax to avoid landfill disposal, measures to reduce the consumption, removal of administrative barriers for secondary materials, promotion of industrial symbiosis, support of reuse, and proportion, promotion of biogas and green gas. Our mix of measures in Greece also include incentives through taxation, like car, tax proportional, ta car taxation proportional for CO2 emission and pricing, with environmental fees set on single-use plastic bags, resulting to a drastic reduction of their use, while it generating important revenues going back to promote reuse and recycling at lo local level. Furthermore, environmental sustainability considerations should be a key investment criteria for public expenditure and for the selection of private projects for the banking sector. Ladies and gentlemen, cooperation on environmental issues can be a catalyst for peace and stability at regional level. Following the reference made by my Italian colleague earlier, let me also stress the importance of the upcoming COP21 of the Barcelona Convention in Naples in December, as it will provide us with the opportunity to discuss key emerging issues and sectors pertaining to the environment and sustainable development in the Mediterranean in the years to come. In this direction, we implement already other trilateral initiatives with Cyprus, Israel and Egypt in East Mediterranean, connecting environment and pollution control with peace, stability and friendship. Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you very much, Minister, for that statement. I would now like to invite Madame Misa Olafwi from Morocco, Secretary of State for Development. You have the floor. Vous avez la parole, Madame le Secrétaire d'État. You have the floor. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Sayyid al-Rais, Sayyid al in the name of Allah the Merciful, the Compassionate, uh, allow me on behalf of the Kingdom of Morocco to, to, uh, to present my deepest condolences to the victims, to the parents, uh, families, and uh, friends of the victims of the plane accident. I would like to thank the UNEP and uh, also the UNEA for the preparations for this, uh, for this conference. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, 
enormous challenges. Uh, we are confronted with enormous challenges. Therefore, we have to reconsider our uh, consumption and production patterns, which uh, lead to more waste and unsustainable uh, use of uh, these uh, resources. Therefore, we should uh, establish uh, plans for an economic development that takes into consideration the sustainable use of natural resources. In order to uh, tackle these challenges and based on our awareness of the role that should be played in this area, the Kingdom of Morocco has established reforms at the legal, practical, and business levels, including the economic one, which led to a national strategy under the aegis of uh, His Highness the King of Morocco. At the same time, this strategy uh, aims to to uh, transition towards a green economy uh, based on circular economy as well as uh, uh, the sustainable consumption and production. We have an action, national action plan with regard to sustainable consumption and production. And uh, in order to sustainably manage our waste, we have for the first time a uh, national strategy. Uh, it is an ambitious uh, plan to reuse and recycle uh, waste, uh, thus uh, giving new opportunities for investment and creating new jobs. Uh, this will lead us efficiently towards a green economy. We are also uh, working towards uh, tackling pollution, and uh, we, have, we are working towards a renewable uh, energy under the ages of of His Majesty the, uh, the King. Uh, we are working towards a renewable energy uh, uh, plan that will uh, use uh, solar uh, energy and other renewable resources in uh, the uh, power uh, production. We also uh, adopted a pact that will uh, make companies commit to responsible uh, behaviors in terms of uh, production and and business uh, plans. Uh, we are facing uh, major challenges in our transition to uh, sustainable consumption and production. Therefore, we have to take into consideration the needs of African uh, countries in terms of uh, capacity building and uh, support and financial support. We will do our utmost in order to quickly transition to ecologically friendly uh, practices. In the next month, we will host the fifth uh, forum for sustainable development in Africa. In Africa, uh, we we look uh, forward to an exchange of ideas and ideas, which will lead to the promotion of sustainable. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary of State, for your statement. I will now invite Mr. Joao Fernandez. Minister for the Environment and Energy Transition of Portugal to make his statement. You have the floor, Minister. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, I would start by expressing my sincere condolences to the families and loved ones of all the victims of the plane crash last Sunday. Allow me to congratulate the Estonian Presidency of the fourth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly for organizing this session and giving us the opportunity to deepen our reflection on innovative solutions for environmental challenges and sustainable consumption and production. This theme reminds us of the commitments that we need to make to reshape our economy towards a circular economy and to urgently fight climate change complying with the Paris Agreement. Portugal believes that addressing climate change challenges and promoting the transition towards a low-carbon society will allow us to be more prosper, to create more jobs, to have a fair society well within the limits imposed by our natural system. Furthermore, it represents investment opportunities for our countries and cities. The Portuguese environmental policy design for the next years is set in three connected goals decarbonizing society and promoting the energy transition, valuing the territory, and move towards a more circular economy. First, decarbonizing. 
In 2016, and in line with the ambition of the Paris Agreement, Portugal was the first country in the world to set the goal of being carbon neutral in 2050. Our path towards neutrality is defined on the Carbon Neutrality Roadmap and in our National Energy and Climate Plan, which establish our climate and energy national targets so <clears throat> that by 2030, we intend to reduce between 45 and 55 percent the greenhouse gas emissions in relation to 2005. We have set a target of 35 percent for energy efficiency. We want to achieve 47 of re percent of renewable in gross final energy demand and 80% of the electricity produced in Portugal will come from endogenous renewable sources. Portugal is a leader in the following fields. We have reduced the greenhouse gas emissions in 22% since 2005. We have decreased our energy consumption. And in March 2018, renewable energy delivered more than 100% of Portugal electricity consumption for the first time. Second, promoting circular economy. There can be no carbon neutral economy without a circular economy, one that preserves resources inside our economic system, extracting value in a slower, more productive way. An economy that promotes sharing, the design for reuse, for repair, for remanufacture, one in which I pay for the service the product gives me, not the product itself, an economy that preserves rather than destroys. Third, value the territory. To be carbon neutral does not mean zero emissions. It means that we need to adapt our territory and we need to have a thriving, sustainable and resilient forest. This is why it is very disappointing to know that in this in year four, we did not reach a consensus in the resolution to combat deforestation. To conclude, the environmental tasks in the actual economy model are challenging, but we believe that with innovative solutions for environment, we can think beyond and live within towards a better and sustainable world. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Minister, for your statement. We would now like to invite Mary Christine Margem, Minister, uh, Minister for the Environment and Sustainable Development of Belgium. You have the floor, Minister. Thank you very much, President. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. The scientific assessments are clear. They confirm that we need to act urgently and on an international level. Currently, thousands of young people are demonstrating every week, every Thursday to be exact, in my country and in other countries as well, calling for more ambition when it comes to the climate challenge. I've met these young people on many occasions and I've felt real anguish, real stress that they feel. And it's our job to find a response to that anguish. This only increases my determination to continue with this work with ministers from all regions of Belgium and with all of you in order to make energy transition a reality in our country and the world over. A transition towards a low carbon economy that is climate neutral and efficient in the way it uses resources calls for a holistic approach. It cannot be done simply through treating challenges in silos through separating one from another. We need to use science, technology and innovation to help us make this transition. I would therefore like to thank UN Environment for having chosen this topic as the key theme for our fourth session. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all of Belgium is ready to play its role and to set an example. Allow me to focus in on two specific examples, the circular economy and marine biodiversity. Whether it's sorting rubbish, recycling prime materials, Belgium is helping to lead the way in Europe and in the world. I would like to maybe go even further. We'd like to go even further by financing a series of studies looking at things standing in the way of recycling different categories of waste. We'll continue with this work after this legislative period because I'm sure that in the environment is an issue that is a long-term problem. We even hosted the Global Resources Forum conference, which was aimed at looking at promising initiatives and how to make them economically viable. 
The fight against food loss and waste is another field that we're also paying a lot of attention to in Belgium. And through the Green Deals, Belgium, for example, is promoting and stimulating a public-private uh, commitment in circular supply chains, shared mobility, sustainable cities logistics, circular building or promoting more sustainable food systems. We have uh, used four point, committed 4.5 billion euros to this. We are trying to push forward shared action aiming to fight against deforestation, looking at supply chains and basic agricultural pro products. I would like to thank several countries here who have supported this initiative but who unfortunately have not been able to see it through. And along with them, I'm committed to uh, carrying out ambitious dialogue around this issue. President and Excellencies, I would like to finish by talking about marine biodiversity that has really been tested due to climate change, pollution, the loss of coastal habitats and the over-exploitation of marine species. We need to act. Last month, Belgium organised an international conference. Uh, you were there, President, you participated in it, and it was about the consequences of climate change on the oceans. A Brussels declaration was the result of this. This declaration was signed by 30 countries and it underscores the importance of scientific research calling on a reduction of emissions from marine transports. I would like to take this opportunity. Thank you very much, Minister. A very committed woman when it comes to fighting climate change and preserving our oceans. I applaud you, Madam Minister. I would now like to invite Mr. Dimitri Kobilkin, Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment from the Russian Federation, to make his statement. Minister, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Mr. President, distinguished uh, participants, Russia also joins with it extending its condolences to all those who lost victims in the air crash. The main task of our assembly is innovative solutions to mitigate ecological problems and sustainable production and consumption. Ecology has become one of the priority and strategic development orientations of the Russian Federation for 2024, as defined in a uh, President Putin's decree. For its practical resolution, the Environmental Ministry has drafted a national project on the environment. The priority is production and consumption waste management, significantly lowering air pollution at uh, industrial centers, improving drinking water quality, improving the ecological health of water bodies, and preserving biodiversity. Among the most important the, this will require a very comprehensive approach. We believe that here we have the basis for principles of a circular economy, which is the basis for a fourth uh, industrial revolution, as stated at the Davos International Economic Forum in 2016. Linear models of production inherited from the past are today revealing increasingly serious shortcomings, one of which is seen in increasing environmental problems. A circular economy presupposes uninterrupted reuse of technological and biological materials in production and the preservation of, and in other words, sustainable uh, production and use. What is useless waste for one company may prove valuable raw material for another. Steam, water, slag, sand, bio waste, these materials are already part of a coordinated exchange process. We believe that a circular economy is a very important characteristic of a green, sustainable economy. We have far more than simple issues of exhaustion of natural resources and climate change on our agenda. What we also need to look at are economic growth and creating new jobs, ways of further developing the whole world. Referring, Russia has taken systemic measures to implement 
closed cycle economic models, in addition to its work on a national level, we certainly will enhance international cooperation studying the best available foreign experience. We are convinced that the development of international dialogue and a partnership based on trust will facilitate increased global effectiveness for the economy of the future. Now, as to the far future, that fully depends on us. Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Dimitri. Thank you very much, distinguished minister, for your statement. And I should now like to call on the uh, Minister Moussa Mohamed Ahmed, Minister of Habitat, Urban, uh, Urban Affairs, and the Environment of Djibouti to make his statement. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, it is a particular pleasure for me to be present with you to take the floor on this fourth session of the General Assembly of the United Nations for the Environment. I sh the topic for this session is entitled Innovative Solutions to Meet Environmental Challenges and to Promote Sustainable Production and Consumption. This is a topic which leads us to promote specific activities to preserve and protect our planet. The first challenge facing our planet today is climate change. Indeed, climate change has become a serious and growing threat. Hurricanes, recurrent drou droughts, forest fires, glacial melt, torrential rains, violent flooding, these elements all show how the, the impact of the deregulation of the climate of our planet. Countries in development, in particular the Republic of Djibouti, are vulnerable to the dramatic consequences of climate change. We are already feeling the impacts of climate change, which have a very serious impact on our populations and ecosystems. The Republic of Djibouti is regularly hit by droughts which have a major impact on rural populations. Our country is, moreover, subjected to increasingly acute hydraulic stress. In order to meet the challenges of climate change, the government of Djibouti, with the support of its development partners, has undertaken actions for adapting to climate change, the aim of which is to increase the resiliency of vulnerable populations, eco fragile ecosystems, and essential infrastructure. In terms of mitigation, the Republic of Djibouti has a strong potential for renewable energy and has committed itself to a low-carbon policy aimed at setting up programs for solar, wind, and geothermal ed energy on a national level. The second challenge facing the world is that of losing its biodiversity. Africa has exceptional biodiversity, but this is nonetheless becoming increasingly scarce because of drought, uh, actions by humans, and climate change. The biodiversity of uh, ecosystems are important for man. Biodiversity also contributes to economic development of our countries because the development of tourism and fishing is based on both land and marine ecosystems, which must be preserved if we wish to have sustainable development. Djibout, the third challenge facing mankind is the pollution of air, water, and soil. I should like here to stress plastic pollution, which now affects all oceans of the planet, thus threatening marine ecosystems indispensable for the development of fishing and tourism. Thank you for your attention. Merci, monsieur. Thank you very much, distinguished Minister Moussa, for your statement. And I should now like to call on His Excellency Mr. Adela Atira, Minister of Environmental Quality Authority, State of Palestine. You have the floor, Madam uh, Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. President, Your Excellencies. I, well, I salute you. I should like to start by extending my sincere condolences following the 
crash of the Ethiopian airline. May God receive them. And I express my thanks and gratitude to the Kenyan government for its warm welcome. And Mrs. Anderson, I should like to congratulate you on the post you have as executive director of UNEP. We wish you all every success. I should like also to transmit to you the welcome of His Excellency Mahmoud Abbas, the President of the Palestinian State, as well as wel a welcome from the government and people of Palestine, which uh, aspires to independence and an independent uh, capital, East Jerusalem, which is the capital of uh, East uh, uh, of the Arab nation and which is suffering from Israeli occupation and the violation of its historic in, and religious and cultural and natural inheritance. At the end of the meeting, uh, the, the topic of this meeting is innovative solutions uh, to climate change and sustainable consumption and production in order to ensure uh, for the benefit of future generations. We in Palestine are cooperating along with civil society in this effort and working to ensure that this is a success to serve the interests of mankind as a whole. This requires on our part the a multipartite action because this is a unifying framework for states to find solutions to the problems facing mankind. And we thus need to prevent the the state of Palestine is facing a unique type of challenge in acquitting its environmental responsibilities because of the occupation which undertakes policies and practices aiming at our very existence and natural resources, thus violating the international charter. One of the violations is that of the environment. There is youth, uh, uh, no less than 60 percent of tra uh, Transjordan, uh, including e uh, East uh, Jerusalem, is being occupied by Israel to continue its colonial uh, ambitions. And there is also the separation wall, the exploitation of many of the fertile lands of Palestine being used for military purposes or for uh, waste, toxic waste dumps. This is something that was confirmed by reports, and we, these institutions have find, found 72 sites of, for waste uh, that affect the Palestinian uh, environment, the land and sea blockade on Palestine, Palestine and military violations violate the principles of protection of the environment and international humanitarian law. Ladies and gentlemen, despite all of these challenges, we are determined to move forward to preserve and conserve our environment by acceding to uh, related conventions. The Palestinian government has adopted a political agenda for 2017-2020. This is a framework integrating the environmental uh, issue and climate change. Merci, Madame le Thank you, Minister Adela, for your statement. I should now like to call on I'm so, uh, the Minister for, for Natural Resilience and the Environment of Iceland. You have the floor. President, President, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, when was the first time you realized that if you buy three bags of groceries, you really leave one behind in the store because globally we waste roughly one third of our food? When was the first time you realized that much of the groceries you bought are not only wrapped in plastics, detrimental to the health of our oceans, but also that your juicy shrimp sandwich, for example, may indeed be filled with plastics. Our unsustainable consumption has gone out of hand, with dire effects on the environment and the climate. The good news, however, is that we have opportunities and we have solutions. Let's not forget that there is value in our waste, there is value in our sludge, and there is much benefit in knowledge and innovation to use these value streams 
in a circular economy fashion. The draft ministerial declar declaration here at the UN Environment Assembly points to many of the efforts we need to undertake in the coming years, and Iceland supports them fully. In 2020, the international community will decide on new biodiversity targets for 2030. Habitat protection, invasive alien species, and restoration of degraded forests, wetlands, and other important ecosystems should be high on the agenda, and synergies with other environmental problems. Such synergetic approaches have been emphasized by the Icelandic government through our new climate action plan. One of its pillars is restoration of woodlands and wetlands, combating desertification and climate change at the same time as regaining biodiversity. The Icelandic government is committed to nature conservation and now prepares for the establishment of a large national park in the central highland of the country, a vast wilderness area covering between 30 to 40 percent of the total area of Iceland that will by far be the largest national park in Europe. Tackling the plastic issue is high on the agenda in Iceland. And under our upcoming chairmanship at the Arctic Council, Iceland will put emphasis on fighting plastic pollution. Iceland, strong, Iceland strongly supports a global action on fighting the plastic problem and therefore supports the resolution on plastic pollution here at UNEA to mandate a process where we can discuss a strengthened global governance on marine litter and microplastics, something that can hopefully develop into a legally binding framework on the issue in the future. Dear friends, let's stop leaving that one bag of three behind in the grocery store, and let's stop that bag and its contents being made from single-use plastics. The time to preserve our planet is now. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Mr. Minister, for your statement. I should now like to call on Minister Abhi Kemara, Minister of Environment and Sustainable Development of Mauritania, to make a statement. You have the floor, sir. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished heads of delegation, distinguished participants, following the tragic accident of the Ethiopian Airlines plane on the 10th of March, I should like to address my deep condolences to the families of those who died. The fourth session of UNIA, uh, here we would like to congratulate uh, His Excellency Mr. Sim Kisler, Environment Minister of Estonia, for the, uh, his presidency. We should also like to congratulate all the members of the Bureau. We would like to assure them of our support and encouragement. This assembly is also an opportunity to congratulate Mrs. Inger Anderson, Executive Director of the UNEP for her nomination and the confidence shown in her as in, in this post. Thus, we will no doubt be able to work to improve our environment. I should also like to express my satisfaction that I've been able to participate in the work of this important assembly, and I should like to express our commitment to ensure a high level of implementation of our tasks. We are, our presence here shows the interest that the international community as a whole takes in environmental policies and strengthening environmental governance on a regional, national, and local level. The topic of innovative solutions to meet environmental uh, challenges and sustainable production and consumption for this assembly, as well as the contents in, of the ministerial declaration, show a remarkable awareness uh, and synergy and mobilization. My country, uh, the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, is following with great interest the ambitious reforms and e economic reforms and democratic reforms undertaken in recent years under the, uh, the presidency of our uh, president. These reforms have shown, have been seen by a, an attempt to combat poverty involving social, economic, and environmental dimensions. At the same time, the environmental profile of my country exposes us to a certain number of environmental challenges, including this, in, included therein are recurring droughts and uh, 
uh, various other uh, forms of damage which f seriously affect our rural populations. The situation may get worse and these, situ and these phenomena will uh, worsen. Our country is very uh, vulnerable to climate change and one of the most uh, severely affected by the already critical increase in the intensity of extreme meteorological phenomena. Certain regions of our country are already under hydraulic stress, which is extremely problematic, making our traditional balance very difficult. Given the situation, a new national strategy for the environment and sustainable development is a logical fr and strategic framework to ensure synergy and consistency between programs and sectorial policies in, in, in a perspective of sustainability and participation by all stakeholders. In this context, Mauritania is working to set up appropriate responses on a political and policy level. On a legal basis and in terms of legislation, we have ratified and signed vir virtually all international conventions. In terms of extraction uh, and action plans, we confirm our commitment to multilateral and plurilateral agreements and our participation in various conferences at global summits adopt and we have adopted policies and strategies Merci monsieur le ministre Thank you minister Camara for your statement I should now like to call on the state secretary Mr. Uge Muguban for the environment and rural affairs of Spain to make his statement You have the floor Mr. State Secretary Thank you, sir. Yes. I would like to join with my colleagues in expressing con condolences to the families of those who died in the tragic airline incident, two of whom were Spanish. Delegates, the international community is coming up against great environmental challenges which are clearly interlinked. The impact of climate change endangers biodiversity increases the risk of desertification and increases health problems. Environmental pollution of all types also impacts health and biodiversity and this often comes from activities that are also responsible for climate change. These are challenges as we see which are profoundly interlinked and which can only be dealt with through a real paradigm shift, revising the models with, in which we produce and consume. We've taken important steps forward, but they are not sufficient. The Paris Agreement was a landmark moment, but we know that we need to be even more ambitious in order to achieve our goals. The efforts undertaken in terms of biodiversity are, of course, praiseworthy. But in the recent Egypt COP, we noted that in spite of partial successes, the loss in biodiversity continues. There is increasing concern over the health of our oceans, but the situation is far from improving. We need to put into practice innovative solutions that are based on technology in order to ensure that our societies move towards more sustainable models of production and consumption within the planet's limitations. The UN Sustainable Development Goals we need to be aligned with and we need to ensure that we reduce the economic impact of our economic development. Spain is taking steps in this direction. We have just drawn up a comprehensive national plan on energy and climate under which we plan to reduce by a third our greenhouse gas emissions before 2030. We are also drawing up a 2030 circular economy strategy with the aim of, aim of improving productivity of materials by 30% compared to 2015. We have also increased our protected marine areas, creating a large cetaceous migration corridor in the Mediterranean and a large national marine park in the Balearics, which is already reaching 12% of protected marine areas. The goals are clear and we need innovative uh, solutions to achieve these goals. But we need to make much more effort than we have to date. 
we need to make an effort in, a, in an aim to transform over the next decade the model in which we relate to our environment and we need to do that quickly. The window of opportunity to reverse this situation is closing and we do not have much time. If we want to save humanity we need to protect biodiversity and so ladies and gentlemen we need to get to work. Thank you very much. Monsieur le Secrétaire d'État. Thank you, Secretary of State, for your statement. I'd now like to invite Joshen Flashbart for the Environment and Protection of Nature and Nuclear Security of Germany. Monsieur le Secrétaire d'État, vous avez la parole. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and friends. The global economic system is increasingly reaching its limits. We can see this in the serious air and water pollution in many countries, increasing global resource consumption and decreasing availability of resources in the global rise of CO2 emissions and in many other areas uh, of the environment. At the same time, more than 700 million people are still living in poverty. Our goal has to be to ensure everyone can lead a, a life in dignity without hunger or poverty. This is a central commitment of the 2030 Agenda. I fully support the UNEA president and the new and incoming UN Environment Executive Director in their call to us at this UN Environment Assembly to seek innovative solutions for these challenges. We need to rethink production and consumption patterns and make them more effective and resource efficient. Everyone has a right to strive for prosperity, but we must ensure that this is not at the expense of the environment and climate. Apart from sustainable consumption patterns, innovations are needed. Industry has a key role to play here. At the same time, policymakers are responsible for creating the right framework conditions and incentives. This is why the German Environment Ministry has set up a new program in 2018 for the decarbonization of industry. This program promotes pilot projects for the industrial transition to largely greenhouse gas neutral production. The intention is to avoid short-sighted investments and capital losses and exp expensive retrofitting. Innovations can drive environmentally harmful technologies from the market. One example is the coal-fired electricity generation which in many countries is steadily lo losing ground uh, to renewable-based electricity. We are facing in Germany the same challenges. We are still dependent to a large extent uh, on coal electricity production. To overcome this, uh, we have agreed in the German government to set up a, a commission to advise us how to get out of coal and at the same time do it in a just way, to do it in a just transition uh, way. And this was a successful way. Uh, the multi-stakeholder commission advised us to get out of coal uh, at the latest by 2038, and if ever possible, already earlier by 2035. And the government in Germany has decided to do so. So the latest in 2038, Germany will be a non-nuclear and a non-coal-based uh, economy. I'm delighted that UNEA 4, at UNEA 4 we can contribute to driving forward the fair and fast transition that is needed. And this requires partnerships. The only way to tackle the challenges is through cross-sectoral and cross-boundary cooperation. With this in mind, I would like to conclude with an, with an invitation. Germany will be hosting the International Conference on Climate Action, known as ICA 2019 in Heidelberg, on 22nd and 23rd May. Uh, we want to bring together all stakeholders, and, and I would appreciate to see a lot of you, many of you, at this conference in Heidelberg. Thanks a lot. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Joachim. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister, for your statement. I should now like to call on the distinguished Minister Jassim Amlaw Amouadi, Minister of the Environment and Health of Iraq. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, may God bless you all. My country supports the statement 
expressed by uh, the uh, Delegate of Sudan uh, on behalf of the Arab countries. And I should like to thank all of you for the efforts made to hold this meeting, which is in the shadow of global environmental challenges, including the increasing negative impacts of climate change, which have led to droughts, desertification, pollution, and environmental imbalance. Uh, these challenges encourage us to debate and adopt resolutions to find solutions to these challenges. In keeping with our 2030 agenda, uh, my country uh, supports and confirms the topic of this meeting, innovative solutions to environmental challenges for sustainable production and consumption, in particular to meet the food safety crisis. We also support the resolution presented by the African Group on Food Waste and the Management of Solid Waste. Iraq, sir, also supports the resolution on environmental damage in areas of conflict adopted. The Minister of the Environment and Health has done an evaluation in oil production areas and in the Supramakh uh, area and in provinces affected by conflict where there have been major quantities of chemical pollutants and we have also tried to clean up zones that were under Daesh control and are strengthening our capacity to uh, clean up contaminated zones as well as ruins and waste. We have suffered from a number of terrorist attacks which have jeopardized a number of provinces of our country and we also suffer from uh, air scarce, uh, water scarcity in from the Tigris. We've also, our inhabitants have also suffered in particular swamp areas which were classified in 2016 by UNESCO as global heritage sites. We would like to request assistance uh, from for fragile countries, including Iraq, in order to ensure the observance of differentiated principles and principle uh, uh, under the G6 to meet the objectives for sustainable development by 2030 and the use of clean renewable energies respecting human rights and as well as gender equality combating poverty and guaranteeing social justice and at this meeting we wish you every success, and we would like to support all decisions. Thank you very much, sir, for your statement. I should now like to call on um, uh, the representative of Samoa to make the floor. You have the floor. Then the sixth annual environment outlook has confirmed our worst fear. The overall environment situation is deteriorating at an unprecedented pace. Our planet is increasingly polluted, rapidly warming, and quickly losing its biodiversity to, due to climate change and uncontrollable production and consumption patterns. Left unchecked, this situation will pose serious consequences for the most vulnerable. This is the alarming reality of resource constraints, small island developing state like mine whose efforts towards environment cons conservation and sustainable development are hindered given our circumstances and vulnerabilities. The theme of our assembly is a timely wake-up call that challenges all of us that 
to live within and think beyond in search of innovative solutions to our own self-inflicting problems. Our 2030 development agenda is to ensure that economic, social, and technological progress occurs in harmony with nature. This requires member states to act collectively to mitigate the consequences of uncontrolled pursuit of development gains at the expense of environment. Mr. President, the Samoa pathway is the blueprint of SIT's sustainable development agenda and is subject to review in September this year. Preparatory meetings held so far have pointed to implementation caps in the conservation and sustainable use of oceans and seas, sustainable management of chemicals and hazardous waste, and sustainable consumption and production, pollution from electricity generation, transportation and industrial processes is another, another growing concern. To address these challenges, seats look to this assembly for empathy, not sympathy, for understanding, not grandstanding. Mr. President, Samoa continues to fulfill its obligation under the real convention and other multilateral framework, including the 2030 development agenda and the Samoa pathway. We have localized and integrated this cross sectorially in our national development strategy and implemented it through partnership with relevant stakeholders nationally and beyond. Mr. President, the UNEP Pacific Office was established in Samoa in September, September 2014 as one of the concrete deliverables, deliverables of the UN SEEDS Conference. The office has brought UNEP closer to our Pacific countries, increased its relevance, and enhanced our engagement in its work program. The three-staff team is under extreme pressure to address the diverse needs and expectations of our member countries. This situation must be resolved to better position this office to manage the regional challenges more, more effectively. Finally, the environmental challenges is a global problem requiring global solutions. Some like marine waste, plastic leaders across national borders and maritime boundaries are invited. Our assembly's theme requires impl implementable action on the ground where all action matters and none too small, inferior, or inconsequential. It is why Samoa has taken a bold move to ban single-use plastic effective January this year to try and tackle this pressing environmental challenge which is not of our making. Nationally and regionally, Mr. Chairman, we will not be able to solve this problem on our own, but collectively we can. Will your countries be willing to follow suit? I thank you. Merci. Thank you very much, Minister, for that statement. I would now like to invite Mr. Mukhtar Babayev, Minister of Environment for Azerbaijan. Minister, you have the floor. I am replacing our minister. Thank you. Uh, distinguished Mr. President, distinguished participants at this assembly, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I should like to express our deep condolences at the tragic loss of the plane, which uh, led to many victims, including many staff of the United Nations. I should also like to express our deep gratitude to the government of the Kenyan Republic and for the program of the United Nations for the Environment for its excellent organization of this fourth session of the United Nations Environmental Assembly. The protection of the environment and rational use of natural resources is an extremely important component part of the reforms conducted in our country. Environmental problems are constantly focused on by the leadership of our country. I should like to note that under the President's uh, auspices, in 2019, we've confirmed a, the development, uh, our development plan for the future, and this is a strategy which calls for the development of our economy on the basis of principles of sustainable development and includes a full integration of economic, social, and environmental components. 
along with political reforms of a high level at the United Nations, we made a vol voluntary contribution to implement the goals of sustainable development and we are presently preparing our second voluntary report which will be submitted this year. In, we will also have a roadmap for our national economy and all sectors of the economy in order to ensure sustainable development of our petroleum sector and this will include a strategy for economic development and action plans up to 20 uh, for the 2020s and a long range program up to 2025 as well as target programs for the period after 2025 over the last 10 years or so we have in increased our we have worked to carry out large-scale program, programs to irrigate uh, arid territories and under the Framework Convention on Climate Change, and we have ambitious aims to limit greenhouse gas emissions by 35 percent up to the year 2030 as compared to the base year of 1990. And we are also taking efforts to limit emissions of greenhouse gases, gases. And we also have a strategy to manage solid waste for 2018 through 2022. One of the main expected results of this strategy is improving the uh, collection and reuse of solid waste. And we have also confirmed measures to lower the use of plastics uh, by for 20 uh, in, in the 2020s and we have measures to improve systems of managing plastic waste and using alternative uh, substances we wish to carry out various other projects for environmental merci Thank you very much for your statement. J'invite à présent. Now let me call on Mr. Zabolia Modlek of Poland, Foreign Minister, Minister of Poland, the Environment, to make his statement. You have the floor, sir. Thanks, the distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to be here and deliver the statement on behalf of the Republic of Poland. I would like to express our deepest condolence to the families of the victims of the tragedy, tragedy in the Ethiopia. Our prayers with you. Last year in December, my country hosted the 24 session climate conference. Uh, after the two weeks of intense negotiation, the international community success in agreeing the procedures and the rules necessary to make the Paris Agreement alive. Katowice Rulebook. Katowice Rulebook was adopted and give to government and non-party stakeholders tools to act effectively for the sake of the climate neutrality. It's to believe that the Environmental Assembly here in the Nairobi will result on the crucial decision to advance the sustainable development. Distinguished colleagues, Poland's persuade sustainable development to the protection of the environmental as the key priority. Therefore, we actively engage the Global Forum in actions towards the protection of the climate, biodiversity, towards preventing desertification and pollution, as well as towards tackling the problem of the water scarcity. Poland, country with quiet or recent socio-economic transformation and restart, understand very well that the challenge is to maintain the balance between the GDP growth and the sustainable management of resources. We have managed to decouple our economic growth from uncontrolled pressure on the environment. However, we still recognize the need of the future action towards more innovative solution and the need to act jointly with the other nation and the all interested stakeholders. 
we like to devote a few words of the Polish experience in this regard. It is responsibility of the government to diagnose the most important barriers for the sustainable development. And the base on that, the draft of implementation uh, approach national uh, regulatory framework, which aim of the achieving sustainable development goals. Therefore, we have started a transition from the linear to circular economy. The circular economy is crucial discussion now. Our, one of the goals is to stir Polish economy towards lever depends from the non-renewable resources. Consequently, we work towards increasing the share of the renewable resources as well as stimulate sustainable consumption and the production. It is parent could be great through education and awareness raising, focusing on building environmental social responsibility. Let me mention just two concrete examples. In Poland, we have noticed a great potential to strengthen action of the small municipalities and the communities in transition toward the circular economy. Therefore, we launched a pilot program which focused on public education and building the local capacity. It will be support investment in the waste management, uh, building the sustainability mobility, resources efficiency, circular models in households of agriculture and sustainable use of the land. Another example, it is the wood construction project, which drives from proven solution from the past. Its main goal is build eco-friendly wooden houses, mainly for the people who cannot afford to buy their own apartment. Such house needs ex experimentally uh, 30 percent less heat than conventional construction and Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Minister, for that statement. I would now like to invite Minister Park Chun Kyu, Vice Minister of Environment for the Republic of Korea, to make a statement. You have the floor, sir. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, let me begin by thanking UNEP for organizing this excellent session and also congratulating on the sixth GEO report successfully launched yesterday. The message this report gives us is utterly simple. It calls for a change. A change the way we produce, change the way we consume, and change the way we think and live. To make that change happen, innovation is not a matter of choice, but a must. To, to bring out the best innovative power from ourselves, I believe, there are three policy dimensions that should be explored by governments. First, a strong policy framework. Second, innovative policy tool. And third, a robust governance. A strong policy framework is often represented by laws. Last year, Korea enacted the Framework Act on Resource Circulation to move, to move away from the linear economy defined by take, make, waste cycle to a circular economy. Even the most powerful framework, however, will be of no use if it is not implemented. Effective policy tools, such as green card program, can encourage consumers to adopt sustainable consumption patterns in a smart way. The program was introduced in 2011 in Korea to incentivize consumers to purchase eco-friendly products, use public transport, and save energy. As the environment and SCP agenda are highly cross-cutting, an integrated governance is most important to ensure policy coherence in the agency collaboration and public-private partnership. Last December, the Korean government has established Korean Sustainable Development Goals to build this governance. In the goal-setting process, civil society groups, experts from various fields, and government bodies participated. Indeed, setting the right governance at a national level is important, but as today's environmental challenges have no boundaries, we also need a strong international partnership to tackle many urgent global environment issues such as climate change and transboundary air pollution. Excellencies, certainly innovative solutions cannot be attained with government interventions alone. A culture that fosters sustainability and communities' joint effort to, to move beyond the throwaway culture 
should be accompanied. Let me finally reaffirm that Korea remains as a strong partner in, a, in shaping that culture for a sustainable future. Thank you for your attention. Merci. Thank you very much, Minister Park, for that statement. I would now like to invite Vice Minister Zhao Yingmin, Minister of Ecology and Environment from China, to make his statement. You have the floor. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Chinese delegation, I would like first to thank the UN Environment and the Kenya government for their excellent preparation. And also, I would like to express our condolences for all the people, the victims in the air crash of Ethiopia Airline. The Chinese government regards sustainable consumption and the production as the important components of eco-civilization and green development, and has implemented a number of policy measures to this end and made good progress, which is as follows. First, to continuously optimize its industrial structure so as to promote high quality development and reduce production pressure on resources. So far, the rate of contribution by final consumption and the service sectors to the economic growth have reached 76% and 60% respectively. In addition, the high tech sector and uh, equipment manufacturing industries are picking up growth remarkably, while energy consumption per GDP unit and pollution emission intensity have both dropped over time. And second, to adopt energy saving, environment uh, friendly labeling and certificate schemes. Thirdly, to implement green government procurement schemes, the volume of energy saving and environment friendly products through government procurement accounted for 91% of the total purchase of same products. Four, to implement green finance a preferential taxation policies. By the end of last year, green loan balance in China passed $1.2 trillion, a 16% increase over the past year. Five, to implement innovative technologies and encourage new patterns of consumption. China now boasts the world's largest, largest capacity of new energy-based automobile production and largest installed capacity of wind and solar power generation as well. Every day, over 400 million people conduct business transactions over the internet. Furthermore, there are more than 25 million ride-sharing bicycles running on the street. Six, to raise public awareness, we have formulated behavioral guidance to advocate green lifestyle, which involves saving energy, water, and electricity, as well as garbage sorting and life and recycling. Ladies and gentlemen, as the proverb goes, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, go together. To improve the global environment, it requires the common will and joint efforts of all countries. We look forward to working with all to build a community of shared future and the beauty for Planet Home. Thank you. Thank you, very Thank you very much for that statement. I would now like to invite Mr. Tibor Zoltan Laszlo from Hungary to make his statement. Mr. Secretary of State, Secretary of State you have the floor. Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to represent the government of Hungary at the highest environmental fora of the UN and express our support for its work. We appreciate the result-oriented approach of the UNEA for president, as well as the hard work of the UNEP secretariat and delegations to ensure its success. The key objective of Hungary's environmental policy is that economic development for the country is implemented with due respect to preservation and sustainable use of natural resources. Our firm commitment in this regard is proven by numerous activities and intentions at national and international levels. Several of Hungary's voluntary commitments made at UNEA 3 are closely linked to the main theme of UNEA 4, and we try to react to environmental challenges with an innovative approach encouraging sustainable consumption and production patterns. To mention just some, although in Hungary food waste is below the EU average, we plan further measures. In addition to close cooperation with the Hungarian 
Hungarian Food Bank Association operating on voluntary efforts, we also put great emphasis on awareness raising with the aim of at least 10 percent reduction of food waste by 2020. Our ministry particularly supports local food production and the expansion of local farmer market networks. Short supply chains contribute to the reduction of environmental load by reducing transport needs as well as local job creation. Based on the National Forest Strategy approved by the government in 2016, a comprehensive afforestation plan is being implemented. Our green kindergarten and echo school program has been in operation since 2000 and supports education for sustainable development from early childhood. We also encourage the development of school garden programs in this regard. Our Heat Wisely Awareness Raising campaign provides the population with information and advice on how to heat in a more environmentally friendly way. Hungary is active in international cooperation since it is situated in the middle of the most international river basin of the world, surrounded by seven neighbors, and is thinking responsibly of global environmental problems. As current president of the Carpathian Convention, we wish to underline the role and performance of the UNEP Vienna office which is an excellent example of UNEP's sub-regional presence. In support of the implementation of the Global Waste Sustainable Development Goal, Hungary will organize the third Budapest Water Summit in October this year, putting its focus on the prevention of water crises. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I wish you much success in realizing the UN environmental objectives included in Agenda 2030, which can be realized with responsible thinking and joined forces at all levels. I do believe that the present Environmental Assembly will contribute to it with an ambitious outcome. Thank you for your kind attention. Merci. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Declaration. J'invite maintenant le vice ministre. I now call on the vice ministry. Uh, of the Vice Minister for the Environment of Guatemala to make a statement. Vous avez la parole, Monsieur le Ministre. The floor, Mr. Minister. Señor President. President, Excellencies, the President of Guatemala, Jimmy Morales, set the environment as one of his key areas of government. And for that reason, the Ministry of the Environment and Natural Resources um, and Minister Alfonso Alonso have taken in very significant actions on this topic, including water and sanitation. <coughs> the President of the Republic of Guatemala, Guatemala has set a budget um, for this of 60% of the Development Council's budget for water and sanitation, which is a priority for communities. We're also working with local authorities in order to get a high percentage of the budget for wastewater treatment plants. When this administration took office, there were 40 treatment plants. But today, with the support of the Ministry of the Environment, there are over 250 treatment plants and 500 pre-feasibility studies. In terms of innovative solutions, low-cost innovative solutions, we are setting up handmade basic technology called biofences, which have been placed in more than 250 rivers in the country, which aim to trap litter and solid waste which go through our water systems. We manage to trap approximately 75% of plastics, which equates to thousands of tonnes per year, thereby avoiding pollution of our seas, beaches and oceans. This cheap technology has been shared with brotherly countries such. And from these biofences, uh, about these biofences, you'll have a bit of uh, information in a flyer on your desks. We have also set up public-private partnerships with agreements with sectors that uh, take part in monoculture, cane sugar and palm, in order to ensure that within their crops they have bio-corridors and gallery forests in order to help recover and preserve biodiversity. In terms of restoration and preservation of forests, Guatemala accepted the Bon Challenge and we are working hard in order to fulfill this commitment. To do this, we've signed agreements with various sectors of civil society, such as women's organizations, the elderly, young people, etc. And currently, we are building capacity with education programs 
relating to restoring the environment, climate change, etc. Furthermore, through the Forests Institute, we have more than 38,000 projects for planting and managing private woods. And so this way, Excellencies, Guatemala, in spite of the fact that it is one of the countries that produces the lowest amount of greenhouse gases, we are one of the top 10 most vulnerable countries in the world. And so we call upon this assembly and donor countries to provide more economic support and technological support in order to solve this issue. Thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you very much, Minister, for that statement. I would now like to invite Vladislav Smiers, Minister for the Environment of the Czech Republic, to make a statement. You have the floor, Minister. Maxime, Monsieur President de la République Tchèque, ne po Czechoslovakii. Excellency Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and pleasure to address you on behalf of the Czech Republic here at the primary forum on global environmental issues. Let me start by congratulating the UNEA Bureau President for his, for his leadership and the preparation of this event. This year, we are addressing a topic which I believe goes to the very heart of an of our human nature on this planet. Within this forum, uh, we have been able to discuss and agree upon a number of its elements that we believe to be of utmost importance, such as how we can better design our economies and our societies in the achievement of the 2030 agenda and decent future of all, including innovative approaches such as circular economy. We also covered further improvements in the management of chemicals and waste in various forms, recovery of ecosystems and biodiversity, or expand action on climate. As a country, we have indeed been committed to tackle some of these very issues in support of the theme of the last assembly, but with continuing relevance of our current agenda, we have launched a successful campaign which has brought together the government, private enterprises, municipalities, and consumers in the effort to eliminate single-use plastics. We are currently in the final stages of passing a new waste bill, which will help us eventually eliminate landfilling and promote circular approaches. On that note, we are also underway with the development of a national strategy for circular economy. I'm listing these few as a show of our sincere and commitment to this agenda, but I could go on. Of course, that doesn't mean that we see our work as finished. Tomorrow, at the same time as we conclude this meeting, our high school students have decided to go on strike with a call for more decisive action on climate and swifter transition toward a sustainable global economy and society. Their action gives us both motivation to continue our efforts and hope for a better future. Same as we have recognized continuing work ahead of ourselves, we are looking forward to f further improvement in the way the United Nations Environmental Programme races to the challenges of its mandate under the leadership of the new Executive Director, Madame Inger Andersen. This is the key if it's to deliver on the Agenda 2030, for which, as we know, protection and management of the environment is an absolute foundation. I thank you for your attention. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Thank you, Distinguished Minister. Vladislav, from the Czech Republic. I should now like to call on the parliamentarian from Japan, Mr. Takaki Katsumata, uh, to make his statement. You have the floor, sir. Uh, honorable ministers and all the distinguished participants, I am honored to deliver a statement representing the government of Japan. First of all, I express my deepest condolences to the victims and their families of a tragic airplane accident a few days ago. First, to combat marine plastic litter the important thing is how to prevent plastic leakage into the ocean. There is absolutely no need to restrain our economic activities. All the nationals 
and stakeholders must work together on such measures as sound waste management, recovery of marine litters, three Rs, innovation, and international cooperation. In this union session, Japan is proposing to immediately take action to enhance scientific knowledge and continue to consider a wide range of response options in solving this problem. Japan has announced its decision to make financial contributions to the establishment of a regional knowledge hub and the imp implementation of a UNEP-led research project both in the Asian region. Second, every effort in relation to sustainable consumption and production must be expedited. We are currently examining a plastic resource circulation strategy that includes a 25% reduction milestone for single-use plastics and introduction of mandatory plastic bag fees. Furthermore, our industry is refraining from the use of microbeads in wash of cosmetics on a voluntary, uh, voluntary basis. Japan organized the World Circular Economy Forum with Finland last October and will continue to share best practices with the world. In this union session, we are proposing to invite all stakeholders to promote awareness rising to on resource efficiency and circular economy. Lastly, we are working to create a circulating and ecological e economy to form self-reliant and decentralized society. As this year's G20 chair, Japan is determined to achieve a virtuous circle of environmental protection and economic growth through innovation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Merci. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your statement. I should now like to call on the Vice Minister, Dr. Bishop Edouard Shumba of Zambia to make his statement. Vous avez la parole. You have the floor, Mr. Minister. Mr. President, Excellences, we are immensely grateful that you considered to be part of you and you part of us. As we begin to share together, Zambia wants to join everybody else to convey our grammar of sympathy to our fallen uh, colleagues who passed on a few days ago. Mr. President, it gives me great pleasure, and it being monolithic now, that I can share in the theme of our gathering today, innovative solutions to environmental challenges and sustainable consumption of production. Zambia recognizes that the environmental challenges are immense and negatively affect social economic development globally. However, we are also cognizant of the fact that opportunities exist to deal with these environmental challenges and if we can do it collectively. In this regard, Zambia's government considers this gathering very crucial as it will help member states to advise mechanisms to deal with multiple environmental challenges facing the global today. Allow me, Mr. President, to share with you some of the innovative solutions to environmental challenges implemented by my government in line with this year's theme. Zambia has issued a statutory instrument number 65, which we call extended producer responsibility in accordance with the provision of the Environmental Management Act, this is, in essence, we have regulated and banned the make and the use of carrier bags that are 30 microns and below. I am proud to inform you that this, my government is vigorously enforcing this innovative solution. This is, of course, in line with making a program that we call in Zambia, Keeping Zambia Clean, Green, and Healthy, that is superintended by our president, President Edgar Lungu. Number two, Mr. President, in Zambia we always believe that, you know, through, you know, working together, 
The act is expanded to enhance solid waste management is also has been enacted in Parliament. This is at the core of the legislation and development of the innovative strategies promote investment in solid waste management. We believe that other people's rubbish could be other people's bread, where we'll be able to recycle the harmful and wasteful materials that pollute our environment. On climate change, Mr. President, government has scaled up the implementation of renewable energies. Just two days ago, the President of the Republic of Zambia, President Lungu, commissioned a 54 megawatt solar power plant project that is supported by the World Bank Group. This project is expected to power over 30,000 houses and will have the lowest tariffs on sub-Sahara Africa at six cents per kilowatt hour. Furthermore, Zambia has launched also a plant a million tree initiative and this has been ongoing. Mr. President, these climate change mitigations actions and other innovative solutions to environmental challenges are being implemented in line with the provisions of the national policy on climate change, national policy on environment, the vision 2030 and other strategies adopted by my government to foster social economic development. We need to collectively work together to develop robust and domestic policy systems and guidelines for environmental assessment, audits, monitoring, and evaluation. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre, pour votre déclaration. Thank you for your statement, Mr. Minister. I should now like to call on Mrs. Brim Poisson for environmental transition and solidarity of France. You have the floor. Mesdames et Ministers, I would like to start my speech by saying that France would like to congratulate Inga Anderson as on becoming head of this institution and would like to thank I would like to say that um, the that France will support her. The Paris Agreement is our social contract of the 21st century because we cannot preserve the environment without the means to give everyone a dignified and prosperous life. And we cannot imagine a prosperous society unless we have the means of fighting against climate change. Preserving the environment is, of course, fighting CO2 emissions, but it's also about preserving nature and so we need to make <coughs> preservation of biodiversity a real priority. We also need to have the means to act. By focusing on two key things, that is to say, transform, transforming the whole uh, economic and financial system, this system needs to work for the environment and we also need to transform our economic model. As I said, it's not just about being aware. We are fully aware of the technologies and means of funding, but we need to act more quickly. And this is what we want to do with the One Planet Summit. We'd like to thank the United Nations for that, as well as all partners from the One Planet Summit. But it's, the aim of this is to bring together everybody that wants to act for the environment. That's where we can meet, that's where we can work together, entrepreneurs, NGOs and governments, in order to shift our economy towards protecting our environment. And this is how we will send a signal to all regulators um, of the economic sector. And it's also the way that we will send a signal to those who are perhaps moving slower when it comes to taking action and telling them that they need to act now and that they can't simply wait. For France, 21st century multilateralism is just this. It's taking action. It's new types of partnerships. It's transforming the global capitalist system. This will help to transform international agreements into concrete action. And I'd like to give you a very concrete example. Those who are 
great uh, CO2 polluters. We have the Kigali Amendment from the Montreal Protocol, and researchers in the private sector have come together to help to meet a clear goal, which was, is to keep climate uh, warming to under one degree. We can't do everything as states. We still have time to change things and we need to convince our populations of this. We need to protect, restore and transform. We need to protect biodiversity to ensure our survival. We need to restore the forests that we destroyed in order that we can leave them to our children. We need to transform our models of consumption and production because there's still time to do so. Rather than just a motto, we need to make these three pillars a universal plan of action. Protect, restore, transform. Thank you very much, Secretary of State, for that statement. I'll now call on the head of the delegation of Bolivia, Mr. Aldo Claudé, to make his statement. Vous avez la parole. The floor. Señor Presidente, de la President of the Fourth UNEA, Excellencies, Authorities, and Delegates from Brotherly Countries. On behalf of our President Eva Morales Aima and the we would like to greet all of the countries that have come together here. President, our delegation would like to thank the government of Kenya for the hospitality shown and we join in mourning the loss of human life and the accident of the Ethiopian airline plane. We would like to express our deepest condolences to their family and friends. Our presence here at 4th UNEA is part of our commitment on behalf of the plurinational state of Bolivia to defend the rights of Mother Earth and balance that with the right to development. In UNEA 3, we worked on setting up a critical route towards a world without pollution and now we need to go deeper still and advance further in substantive reflection about our patterns of consumption and production which are unsustainable and which put uh, sustainable development at risk. We also need to move forward in terms of making decisions that promote structural transformation of these processes because they generate exclusive and destructive models. This is necessary in order to strengthen economies based on rights for each and every one of us, as well as balanced, healthy, inclusive and equitable development. We must, therefore, strengthen the diversity in terms of sustainable economic models, those that push for structural change that prioritise life above economic growth and equality over exclusion. We know that a large part of our environmental challenges are the result of historic processes and that is why we say that we have common but differentiated responsibilities and so collaboration is key when it comes to this process. We have made many steps forward but there is still a long path to travel along when it comes to global environmental governance and to do this we are appealing for increased synergy when it comes to United Nations frameworks. We would like to say that UNEA will lose validity and strength if the debates imply steps backwards and inconsistencies with decisions that have already been taken and international agreements. And so we would like to call, therefore, on member states to explicitly recognise the needs to move forward when it comes to implementing the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. We would like to ask the Secretariat of UNEA to fulfil its obligation to first and more equal and inclusive debate that doesn't disadvantage countries with small delegations, which are often those that in fact have most uh, biodiversity and cultural diversity with the greatest surface area of forests, sources of water, and therefore a special relevance in these debates. Finally, President, I would like to uh, express my uh, great delight at the recognition of indigenous com communities and local communities in the ministerial declaration and we are pleased that this is the first resolution in terms of gender equality and human rights and empowering men and women. Thank you. Thank you, Distinguished Minister of Bolivia, for your statement. And I should now like to call on His Excellency Ambassador Abdel Mujin Mohamed Magbrouk uh, from the League of Arab States to make his statement. You have the floor, Your Excellency. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, first of all, I would like to start my 
uh, uh, my word by uh, expressing my deepest condolences, condolences to the families and friends of the victims of uh, the uh, uh, plane crash. May they rest in peace. I would like also to uh, greet Mr. Sim Valmer Kessler, uh, the president of the assembly. I would like to thank him for all his efforts uh, during uh, the meetings. I would like also to uh, uh, to hail Ms. Joyce Misuya uh, uh, for the acting director of the UNEP for her relentless efforts to manage the UNEP. And I would like also to congratulate Ms. Anderson for her appointment as executive director. I wish her full success. I would like to uh, give you the greetings of the Secretary General of the Arab League, his wishes for a successful uh, session that would be able to establish standards as well as promote the achievement of the SDGs within the 2030 agenda. Arab countries via the, uh, the uh, Arab uh, uh, League and also the Forum of Ministers of the Environment have uh, held an exceptional, an extraordinary meeting in Jordan. This has been uh, made uh, possible through a support by the UNEP and namely the West Asia uh, Bureau. We have agreed on a common position with regard to our agenda and our priorities in a way that is in line with the main theme, uh, the overarching theme of, the of this, uh, uh, of this uh, assembly, i.e. innovative solutions to environmental challenges and sustainable consumption and production, and we also agreed on a conceptual note which includes two draft resolutions proposed to uh, this uh, uh, assembly. One is uh, the, uh, the uh, reducing uh, the loss of, uh, of food in hot climate countries, which uh, Sri Lanka uh, agreed to support. The second issue is very important and is a priority for the Arab countries. It concerns solid waste and innovative solutions as well as national and regional uh, initiatives in order to tackle this challenge. And uh, we uh, discussed many important issues during, uh, the, uh, uh, during this session. We uh, call for, uh, the, uh, uh, for affording financial resources in order to put these, uh, these, uh, de these uh, decisions uh, in uh, uh, implementation. We call for the liberation of the uh, of uh, Palestine, the state of Palestine, and we call also for providing them with financial resources so they can implement their project. The uh, uh, League of Arab States is working in collaboration with UNEP in order to review the conceptual note that, uh, uh, with a view uh, to uh, signing it after the uh, end of the. Uh, validity of the previous uh, conceptual note. I would like to reaffirm our position on the, uh, on the ministerial declaration, which calls for the respect of international law in terms of environment, especially with the regard of uh, common but differentiated responsibility in, uh, in addition to justice and equity. The microphone stops. Merci. Excellence, pour votre déclaration. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your declaration. I should now like to call on the group of organizations and trades unions, Mr. Bert Devel, to make his statement. You have the floor, sir. I work for the Workers and Trade Unions Major Group. We, present, we represent 210 million workers worldwide. First of all, the workers' movement would like to express their solidarity with all the people that lost loved ones in the plane crash. Dear delegates, our members are very afraid of the impact of climate change and environmental degradation on their future. We know that there are no jobs on a dead planet, and tomorrow you will see unions walking with the students in many countries everywhere in the world, and they will be asking for ambitious climate measures. However, 
We do not only take to the streets, we take our responsibility at all levels. From the company floor with active green union reps, in the economic sectors and in social dialogue processes at national and international level. There is one group of workers I would like to draw your attention to, and that are the men and women working in fisheries and tourism. They see their jobs endangered by massive plastic pollution in our seas and oceans, and they want a binding agreement to stop this pollution. The problem has to be tackled from the oil well to the waste stage. As unions, we ask for decent jobs in this profound transition of all stages of the plastic value chain. Dear delegates, everybody speaks about ambition, action, urgency. But at the same time, we see that emissions and pollution is going up instead of down. One important piece seems to be missing in the negotiations, and that is equity, justice. Taking care in a comprehensive and credible way the negative impact on the most vulnerable in society, on the workers that lose their livelihoods and their jobs, is the only way to un unlock truly ambitious and effective measures. The unions call this just transition. We kindly urge you to take this just transition into account when you go back to your country to implement the measures we all urgently need. Thank you for your attention. Merci. Thank you very much, sir, for your statement. And I should now like to call on the group of civil society and youth, Mr. David Menely, to make his statement. You have the floor. Yeah. For this opportunity to speak. My name is David Monene, and I am speaking today on behalf of the NGO major group, Women and Youth and Children, distinguished delegates. We are nearing the end of this UNEA, yet we fear that we will be living here with heavy hearts. Whilst many inspiring solutions and examples have been shared throughout this week, too often the negotiations and discussions here have been too shallow. We are bitterly disappointed that there was so much opposition to addressing vital areas such as deforestation, overconsumption, and sustainable agricultural supply chains and global chemicals pollution. The wording in many resolutions was severely weakened by some of the countries and major commitments dropped. This is a disgrace. The world needs more than empty platitudes and promises of an elusive tomorrow that never comes. In our previous statement, we referred to the wealth of science and data that, have, that we have available telling us that we are at a critical turning point where inaction will lead us to over a cliff edge and beyond a point of no return. Now we have the GO6 report stating clearly that SDG targets on environment will not be met. This means that the promises to ourselves and to our children that they would not be left behind are crumbling in front of our very eyes. We need urgent action and solid commitments for transformative change. If we are to have any chance of staying within the planetary boundaries, weak language and technical mitigation measures are totally unacceptable. Thousands of students in the streets, hundreds of thousands of youth groups and NGOs, including faith-based organizations, are calling on you to establish unity of purpose to address these fatal challenges. Dear Member States, we remain your indispensable partners. Our community is full of dedicated experts and leaders ready to work with you to solve the crisis we face today. However, we need all of us alive to do this. Therefore, we urge you to protect environmental defenders who work on the front line and too often find themselves under attack for standing up for our future. Our planet needs saving. Our children our youth are assets in securing our biodiversity and the entire human race. The planet's climate and ecosystems will recover once we stop the environmental crisis. Instead of rushing to untested, unverified, and potentially risky human-controlled solutions like geoengineering, we should be focusing on healing the planet. Dare we not forget this as we all head back to our respective homes and families. We are ready to secure all our futures we urge member states to truly open the doors to help us help you help the world. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you very much, sir, for your statement. 
I should now like to call on the group of farmers, Mr. Savogeny Naringar, to Madam, to take the floor, to make your statement. You have the floor, Madam. Thank you, Mr. President, Excellencies, Delegates, and Colleagues. I'm Sarojini Rangam from Pesticide Action Network and the Pacific, representing Farmers Major Group. First of all, our condolences to the families and friends who lost loved ones in the Ethiopian Airlines. Farmers Major Group welcomes the resolution on promoting sustainable practices and innovative solutions for curbing food loss and waste, and the resolution on chemicals and waste. As farmers' constituency, we hope for the substantial reduction of food loss and waste and the urgent <clears throat> implementation of the resolution by member states. However, we are concerned that food losses are not being addressed in the industrialized and rich countries in the resolution. We also believe that priority should be given to preventing food losses and wastage at retail level and with consumers. Safe and nutritious food is an important component of health and environment and sustainable food systems and must be pri prioritized in the resolution in its implementation. Food losses at the level of production due to extreme climate events, privatization, and monopoly control over seeds needs to be strongly emphasized. Meat consumption and production is inextricably linked with adverse effects to the sustainability of food systems and substantial reduction in their production and consumption is necessary. We would like to suggest an enhanced food production system rooted in agroecology, biodiversity, climate resilient varieties, and traditional seeds and knowledge. And that would address the issue from production level. In developing countries, we have countless examples of private public partnerships and aimed at enhanced agricultural infrastructure working against the farmers by increasing costs and reducing incomes. Therefore, it is critical that there is substantial public investment in post-harvest services and all services as well. Regarding the resolution on chemicals and waste, the Farmers Major Group welcomes the need for urgent and resolute action at all levels to implement the 2030 agenda and including an improved enabling framework for the sound management of chemicals and waste. And we welcome the initiative of the High Ambition Alliance on Chemicals and Waste. We call for urgent actions to implement and immediately address the issues of thousands of farmers and agricultural workers poisoned by pesticides and their children and all children unknowingly suffer the adverse health effects and lowered IQ as a result of exposure to chemicals, particularly pesticides. We call for urgent action, including legally binding instruments to address the health and environmental impacts of the use and dumping of highly hazardous pesticides in developing countries, as well as hazardous chemicals. We would like to suggest the inclusion of groups that are most affected by these chemicals and waste, and CSOs, in this high ambition alliance so that their concerns are fully addressed. We also Merci, Madame, for your declaration. Thank you, Madam, for your statement. Thank you very much. Nous avons à présent and so that brings us to the end of our list of speakers. We had 44 this afternoon in this wonderful plenary session. And I would like to particularly thank and congratulate the interpreters. A round of applause for the interpreters, please. Thank you very much, sir. In the plane accident, there were three interpreters that lost their lives.
So tomorrow, the national statements will start at 10 o'clock in this same room, in, room and I now um, declare this session closed.